Hi everyone, welcome to Draftscapes, I'm Chris Tuccio. In this video, we're going to be discussing the mechanics of design drafting. Now, it might seem as though any drafting technique might work as long as you have the right equipment, but for most, this isn't the case. So we're going to take a look at some tips for landscape drafting, and I'll actually show you how to draw with proper form for beautiful, confident lines. Stick around. Hi everyone, so today's lesson is all about the biomechanics of drafting. Now what do I mean by mechanics of drafting? Well it means how your body actually moves when drawing lines across the paper. Despite what you may think, it's an extremely important aspect of most artistic disciplines, whether it's illustrative sketching, cartooning, or design drafting. The reason it's so important revolves around this idea of muscle memory. When I was in middle school, I remember my parents sending me off to a basketball camp for the summer, and on the first day, the director of the camp lined us all up to watch him shoot free throws. He shot basketball after basketball almost effortlessly, with each one going in the hoop. He made almost 30 in a row before missing, and is actually very disappointed that he, he didn't make more than 30. When he was done, he explained this idea of muscle memory, and it still kind of resonates with me today. So believe it or not, when your muscles contract to complete a certain task, neurons from your brain send signals down to the muscles to activate the muscle tissue. This is called muscle recruitment. The more repetition that you give towards an activity, the more muscle fibers become recruited to that task and the better accuracy you have with producing the desired result. It's true for both gross motor skills like walking and running as well as fine motor skills like drawing. The muscle memory is a very important for two reasons. First, you can easily develop bad habits when you're drafting that are going to be difficult to break because your muscles will want to move in that specific way. Secondly, the more you practice with proper good form, the greater your muscle memory will become and the better at drafting you're going to be in the long term. So, now for just the science. What's good form? There are two things that I want to go over, and that's creating bold, confident lines and keeping your drafting pencil at the proper angle. We're going to start with creating bold, confident lines. Okay, so let's start with creating bold, confident lines. Now, what do I mean by a confident line? Well, say you have two people trying to get from point B to point A or from point A to point B. The first person, he's not that confident. He'll stop and start and change direction and look at his map and he's going to keep going little by little. He's not really sure where he's going to go. And then little by little, he finally makes his way to point A. But it's that constant, unsure, unconfident line that is holding him back. And it gets this sort of checking or this marks on the surface of the pen where you're going to notice that it's a very squiggly type of line, very not very bold, not very confident. Well, let's say we have person two. She knows exactly where she's going. And so she might wobble a bit, but she knows I need to go from point A to point B. So she's going to just make uh, a line like that. Now, that line might be have a little squiggles on it, but it's a bold, confident line. And that's what we're looking for. Now, there's a few things that you can do to ensure that you have bold, confident lines. The first is to ensure that you have the proper equipment. So you want a good T-square, or here I'm using a drafting board with a parallel rule. You want good um, uh, utilities like markers or uh, drafting pens, good pencils, uh, good scales. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're using the proper materials when drafting. Now, I'll make sure uh, in the description below that I've listed all the things that we're going to be using. Now the second thing, uh, which is much more difficult uh, and requires some practice, but that's the actual act of pulling the line across your body. Now, what does that actually mean? So if you look at your arm, and I'm going to try and show this on camera, but if you look at your arm, you have uh, a number of joints, four joints. You have your shoulder, which is off camera, but you also have an elbow, you have a wrist, and you have your finger joints. Now, your fingers are actually separated into multiple joints, but we're going to use them separately. Now, those joints have what are called, what's called interior flexion. So, your shoulder can bend inward like this. Your elbow can bend into towards you, but it really can't go out, can't stretch out too far. Your wrist can go inwards quite a bit, and actually can go outwards a bit too. But your fingers can go primarily in, but not too far exterior. So all of your joints have this interior flexion. So you can move them in, but they don't really have great exterior flexion. 
Okay, so we want to practice what's called pulling our line. And the reason for that is if I'm pushing my line, okay, from one part of my body across and I'm pushing it from one point to another, I have all these little interior flexions that can activate and actually can throw me off course. If I pull my line from one point to another across my body, I'm doing exterior flexion and I have the ability to have a much crisper, uh, more confident, bold line. Now this technique is true for both horizontal and vertical lines as we'll see. And it's also important for lettering which we're going to cover in a separate video. So before we start practicing, let's cover a few more things. One thing we need to look at is how the drafting pencil actually rests on the paper and how we're holding it in our hands. Now I'm going to add again as I said links in the description of the specific tools that I'm using uh, just to make sure that you understand um, the types of tools that uh, you're going to get. And I also have an article on Draftscapes on um, the recommended tools that I'll provide and I'll link that also in the description. Um, but uh, what we're going to talk about is using your, your lead holder or your, your drafting pen. Now I'm just using a, a regular um, uh, technograph with uh, some standard uh, 2B uh, graphite in here. So before we get to drafting, and I'm going to try and show this as best as I can, we're going to expose a little bit, probably about a quarter inch of graphite, okay, about a quarter inch of graphite, and I'm going to take uh, my actual sharpener uh, here, and I'm going to put it in, and I'm going to sharpen my my pen. You might not be able to hear that, uh, but you can hear it scraping. I'm going to give it a nice uh, uh, sharpened edge. Okay, and so then when it comes out, there's this little plug here that I'm just going to dab on it. Okay, and then I do a little doodle on the side. I'm going to I'm going to actually doodle uh, on the paper, but you typically do this on a scrap piece of paper, and you just do a little doodled tree. Okay, before you actually start drafting. Okay, now why would you do that? I know it's difficult to, to see on here, but it's a little, just a little mock tree, a little sacrificial tree that you'd often do off your paper on a sort of sacrificial piece of paper. Now, why do you do that? Well, you might not see it on here. I'll try and take a picture and overlay it, but when your drafting pencil comes in after you've sharpened it uh, with your, your actual sharpener, you get a very needle-like point to that edge. Okay, and that needle-like point when you're drafting, especially if you're pulling and putting some pressure on it, is going to most likely break. Okay, so you want to just ever so slightly dull that edge. Okay, think of it as a painter that's dabbing off his brush before he's actually painting on the canvas. It's the same kind of, of technique. Now, the next thing that we want to think about is how the actual drafting pen rests on the paper uh, for the purposes of drawing a line. Now, for this, uh, we want to make sure that we're holding our pencil uh, to, at about a 90 degree angle. I say about a 90 degree angle from the paper, so perpendicular, straight up and down. And I say about 90 degrees because I don't want you to be tense. You need to have nice, loose, confident muscles. You don't want to be tense when doing this. So if you're not quite at 90, that's okay. So think about how you normally write, okay? You're normally writing your name or something. That angle is just about 65 to 70 degrees. So just bend it ever so slightly more than that, okay? But you don't want to be ever tense while you're doing this. The reason that you don't want to be at an angle is when you're at an angle into the pen, you're actually, you're pushing it uh, away from the actual uh, straight edge. So for example, if I'm holding it at an angle like this, okay, or an angle uh, where it's it's facing the, uh, the, the edge, my, my pen or pencil is going to hit this edge. It's going to be at an angle and so I'm not going to get a good hold on the guide to guide me. If I do the opposite and I come too far from 90, I'm going to be essentially jamming this lead into this little crevice right here and it's going to smudge. It's going to add a lot of graphite and it's most likely going to smudge that edge. By putting it as a 90 degree angle, I can carry that edge quite nicely and then I can make my line. Um, so 
Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to actually um, create a few lines underneath these two little doodles that I hear uh, that I did. So we're going to start at the top and work our way down. So the first thing I want you to do is just take your drafting pen now uh, or pencil. Now I'm a lefty, so I'm going to be working from right to left. If you're a righty, you're just going to reverse it and do that direction. So um, we're not going to start or stop in any particular uh, area. We're just going to try and draw lines. So you have 90 degrees. Okay. Okay, so you put your pencil like this and you draw in one quick motion across, okay? You want to try and keep as much as you can. Don't force yourself, but keep your elbow uh, and your, your uh, shoulder kind of, of, of stiff, okay? And you're just pulling the line, okay? Then move down. Hopefully you see that line on the video and do it again, okay? And we're going to move down two more times. We're going to do four lines. Okay, and we want 90 degree angle for our pencil, and there we go. So now we have four bold, confident lines. That's the mechanics of drafting, uh, bold, confident lines. Next, we're going to actually um, practice vertical lines, so going up and down. Now, um, for this, we're going to need a triangle. Now, I know the habit for some people, okay, if I have a T-square, and here's like a nice T-square, okay, if I have my T-square, I could just move my T-square to do vertical. You don't want to do that, okay, for a variety of reasons. First, the T-square is lined up with the paper that you're drafting with on the board. As soon as you move it, you've lost the fidelity or the accuracy of the T-square. You don't ever want to do that. Once you've set it, and the paper is adhered to your board, you never want to take your T-square off the board, okay? You always want to just rest it and move it up or down. It should never go and be taken off and moved vertically, okay? So that's why a parallel rule is so nice, because you don't even have the option. It, it's here, it's staying here, I can't move it, it just goes up and down, and so I align my board, my paper to it on the board, and it's perfect, okay? But for those that don't have parallel rules, you can use, um, uh, a T-square. Just make sure that you're not taking it off. So we're going to use an adjustable triangle, okay? Now you can use a regular triangle. I like adjustable triangles. I'm going to do a separate video, uh, which I'll make sure is linked here, on adjustable triangles. But we're going to use adjustable triangles and we want to have the same technique. Now the idea here uh, that you might think of, okay, I'm just going to start on one edge and just keep pushing. Okay, and that's pushing. We don't ever want to push if we can help it. So what we'd want to do, okay, is use our adjustable triangle, have it nice and, and aligned with our parallel rule to make a vertical line, and we want to adjust our body, okay? I don't want you to strain yourself, but I'm moving uh, sort of to a 90 degree angle. So now my body, my shoulder, is actually in line with this uh, triangle. So now when I want to, I could simply uh, place my pencil into the position and pull my line. Okay? So it's not a, a, a full pull. I'm not actually moving my body all the way uh, so I'm, I'm parallel to the adjustable triangle, but I'm almost there. I moved my body to the extent where I'm comfortable with that. Okay? So I'm going to do that a few more times. We'll do it a few more times. Okay? So I'm going to pull my line. Okay? And then I move over pull my line. Move over, pull my line. Okay? And as you get used to it, it's just going to become natural. Okay? Now, if I was to do the opposite, okay, and I'm, if I'm going to try and push my line, okay, I can very easily just go off okay, and make a very poor line like that, okay, where it actually goes off of the guide. By pulling my line, and pressing it into the actual uh, triangle, I make a nice bold line like that. Okay? So pulling, uh, very important. Holding your pencil at a 90 degree angle, very important to create bold, bold lines. Okay? And creating this sort of grid, just back and forth, many times is going to help you develop that level of security and muscle memory. That's what we're trying to develop muscle memory. So now in the future when we draft, you don't even have to think about it. We don't have to talk about pulling. You're always going to go from across your body, from across your body, always pulling your lines. 
Now the last topic that I want to talk about is something that you're going to notice when you're drafting and that is the relative sharpness of this point as you go forward. So we've only drawn what like eight nine lines maybe and you're going to see that that point is going to get dull quite quickly. So there's a trick that you can use so you're not always going back to your little sharpener and sharpening it and then doing your little doodle of a tree. You can actually do this while you're drafting and it's the act of actually rolling your pencil. So I'm going to very much exaggerate it, but I'm rolling my pencil back and forth in my hands. Now, by doing that, I'm actually going to be keeping a sharpened edge on my line as I pull it. Okay, so I just simply roll very lightly. I roll my pencil back and forth or my lead holder back and forth in my wrist as I'm pulling my line. So I'm just going to do it one more time. Okay, I'm going to move my adjustable triangle. I'm going to do it on the bottom of the screen. Okay, and I'm just going to pull my line and I'm going to do it where I actually am rolling my pencil. You can see I'm kind of exaggerating my, my movement here, but I'm rolling my fingers back and forth as I pull my line. Okay, and it takes some getting used to, but by doing that, by rolling it, you're actually going to be able to create a nice unified edge and you're not going to always end up going back to your, your sharpener. So, you should practice that also as you're doing your pulled lines. Practice rolling the actual pencil in your fingers. Okay, so with that, you know, we're going to end the video. Uh, if you like the content, if you like this kind of, um, if these practice uh, videos and you want to learn more information about landscape design or just the landscape profession, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also head over to draftscapes.com. You're going to find a lot of more information, uh, very similar content, an array of other helpful articles. So hopefully you found this valuable um, and I'll see you at the next video.